Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to talk about using a single click to swap styles. So um, styles are the way that your model is presented to the screen. Things like your line weights, colors, what materials are on there, uh, do you have ambient occlusion, um, what's the background look like? These are all parts of styles. Normally, what you can do is you can actually create a group of these and save them as a single style. So they can be reused in, in different uh, jobs. You can you know, create it, save it part of your template, and then you can actually use it when you, you create a new model. Um, but the process of changing styles does mean going in, going into the menu, and clicking on the style you want to use. Not a big deal, not hard to do, but uh, there's a way to connect it to scenes, so it's a single click to swap. So what I wanna to do today is take an existing model, create three very distinct, different looking styles, and then make it so it's just a button push to jump to any one of them. Let's do that. All right, so here we have the Air Force Academy Chapel. We did this on a live stream, if you guys don't watch us. Uh, every Friday, noon mountain time, we do a live model, and uh, this is what we did last week. So. Pretty cool, fun, fun model. It was, it was a good time, about two hours of modeling to get this. So what I wanna do is come up with a couple different ways to visualize this. So the first one, uh, let's look at what we got going on right now. So this was the, the, the model that I created. This is the view I created. So if I come over here uh, to my styles and I click edit, you can see I have my profiles turned on. All of my style, all of my, uh, excuse me, my lines are like a gray, a medium gray instead of black. Uh, I like that, looks good. If I come through here, I do have my ambient occlusion on. I have that slider turned up a little bit so we get a little extra uh, occlusion, occludedness, occludiation. That's probably it. Um, so that looks good, like that, like the way that's working. Um, my materials are my photo real materials, so I have reflection, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. What I can do once I have a style I like, so I can take this and I could make it a new style. I could click, click the new to make a new style and then save it. So I could save it wherever I want. My in model styles or my style styles. These are my styles that I have saved. I could actually save that out there. That's great. But to change it would still mean coming into the styles menu and clicking to change it. So. Uh, it's good to save styles that you're going to reuse across multiple models, but in the case of a single model, I uh, have a quicker way to swap between styles, and that, of course, is using scenes. You guys have seen me use scenes to model or swap all kinds of data. Uh, in this case, for this, we really just want to connect our style. But I'm going to take a little bit further because I'm going to say, well, let's let's actually just leave it all on, everything except camera location. So this means if I do decide that my shadows I want in one style versus another, I could actually toggle that based on clicking this scene. Uh, same with environment. So environment's technically not part of the style, right? In environments is down here on its own. And I have an environment that's included with this one. Uh, right now it is set to only put reflections in. I don't have the sky dome turned on. So if I did want to turn the sky dome and I wanted to look at it like, like it was in the city, which it's not, it's, it's kind of up against the mountains. I could turn that on to see how that looks like next to that. Uh, that's up to me, how I want to use, how I want to use it if I want to use Sky Dome or anything like that. Um, that's my call. In this case, I this looks pretty good just reflecting. I don't necessarily need the Sky Dome, but that, that information, which environment is part of it, will be saved as my, as part of my scene because environment settings is turned on here, as is shadow settings. So this shadow that I have that's casting in, let's go toggle it on and off so you can see the difference. No shadows with shadows. So you can see you get the highlights up here and you get the little dark falling on the ground. Even though that's not technically part of the style, I'm gonna save it into the scenes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save it. Click save, it's gonna pop up and give me a warning. Oops, hold on, cancel. I. I went out and came back in, forgot to turn camera location off. I don't, I want this to be able to swap my my look and feel of my model without worrying about moving the camera around. So I'm gonna turn off camera location, hit plus. Uh, this is a new style, it doesn't hasn't been saved yet. I didn't go into styles and hit save. What do you wanna do? Let's save it as a new style, create that scene. All right, I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this uh, photo 
mat with shadows. Photo material with shadows, that's what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna hit enter. You see that shows up as a scene right here. So if I was to go change anything, I wanna jump back to this, I could click this, it'll put all of my, my view options here uh, back, back there like that. Okay, very nice. Now let's say that uh, I want a, a very clean, simple, maybe something that I would want to use for uh, elevations or sections or or something like that. I want a nice clean, just white line or just black lines on white, super simple, super clean. Let's go set that up. Uh, I'm going to come into my styles. Actually, I'm going to go over here to view and go to my face style and turn it to monochrome. That's going to set everything to default material, which is white on front, blue on the back. Quick test. Yeah, no blue faces showing. That means I did everything. <laughs> They're all facing the right direction. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to make some more changes. I don't really want the shadow on this. Like I said, I want that crisp, clean, all white look. That looks good. Uh, still not getting that white because I'm getting all this, this lighting stuff going on. So I'll turn off shadows. I'll also go into edit my styles. We'll turn ambient occlusion off. That'll get me a little more flat whiteness. That looks good. Um, I'm also going to change my line color from gray just back to uh, a standard black. So put that one on the other screen. So I'm just going to go up here, grab my darkest black. That looks good. I am going to turn off profiles though. Yeah, that's what I want. Just those nice, clean lines. So right now I am still getting, see the light and darkness that is still showing up uh, because of the way my shadows are set up. If I come in here to my shadow settings, even though my shadow's turned off, um, I can still use the sun for shading. And if I if I move this around just right and get that to about 80, uh, I don't get any change in colors. See how it just stays all white? So if I stick my dark up to 80, that's that's pretty much pure white. All right, so that looks great. The only thing I don't like, I don't, I don't necessarily want this background. I want this literally just to be the lines of my drawing. So I'm going to go make one more change. I'm going to go back into my style. Um, I'm going to go to this third tab, which is the backgrounds. And I'm going to turn my sky off. I'm going to change my background to pure white. There we go. That's the style I want. That is, is just, just a bunch of lines. It's white. It's going to be very fast to model in this too. I mean, it might be a little hard to model white on white on white, but uh, it's a very fast style as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be like my illustrative view. So I'm just gonna go into my scenes again, hit plus one more time, and yep, save as a brand new new style, and I'm just gonna call this uh, line work, because that's all it is. There we go. So that's cool, let's let's do one more, let's do another. Let's, this is fun, I'm enjoying this. Um, <clears throat> let's do something a little bit out of the box. Let's go to styles. Go to select and in model, I'm going to come down here to sketchy edges. Uh, not sketchy like they don't work well, like sketchy like it looks like a hand drawn thing. So I want to find the right, uh, ooh, that's kind of cool. Look at that little bluish tint. I like that. Um, but I want to look for the right, yeah, that looks better. I don't want quite so so haphazard as, you know, some of, the, some of these are a little, little kooky. Like that looks like I sneezed while I drew half my lines. Um, this one looks okay, but I kind of like, I like that this one shows a little bit more line work, but you can see it does automatically break the edges and give me a little bit of like spaces and overlaps like a hand drawn thing would be. That looks pretty cool. I like that. I like that look. Um, but I don't like the, I'm going to bring some color back into here. So I'm going to go to view my face style and I'm going to do, let's see what just shaded looks like. All right. So that gave me a little bit of color. So see, I'm getting, I, I don't have my photo real materials on. So those materials aren't showing up, but the, the, the materials that I, where I, place where I did use materials, I'm getting a little bit of a shadow there. I could come in and probably accentuate that a little bit. Let's see if I go into my shadow settings and I bring that dark back down there. I can, I can actually, yeah, that's a little bit more, a little more set off. Looks kind of like, like I got a marker thing going on. Did some draw, hand drawing with markers. I like that a lot. I think this looks super cool. Um, wow. Yeah, that's neat. That'll be a fun one to throw on there, maybe in a, a corner or something like that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and save that too. So I'm gonna go to scenes one more time. I'm gonna hit plus again. Again, camera location still off. It's saving the same information over and over again. So I'm gonna hit create scene. 
I'm gonna click here and say hand drawn. All right, so there we go. So now, now is when the good stuff shows up. If I wanna swap between these styles, I just click on it and there we go. Boom, boom, boom. So quick, so easy. The nice thing about this, so let's say you're, you're working in layout, right? And I wanna go get some drawings out, something like that. Um, one of the things we talk about is scenes. We do say scenes, if there's a specific view you want, go grab scenes. The nice thing about setting up your just your styles like this is I can jump to a style and then if I need to, I can use my camera, whether it be in layout or here, I can and I can go to show me what that front view looks like. And then I'll look through it, my different styles and see which one I like. Let's see what a side view looks like. So I'm gonna go to my camera, standard view, let's go to the left. Boom, there we go. And then let's click through our different styles to see which one I need at any certain spot. Same thing, I can go uh, to my camera and change from perspective to parallel. It's gonna be straight on view. That works, of course, really well for line view. Um, but it looks pretty cool in hand-drawn too. So uh, yeah, so you kind of get the idea. Once that's saved, um, then I can flip through those things anytime I want to look at, you know, my, my hero drawing, look, got to look up to the chapel like that. Oh, very cool. And then what would that look like if it was hand drawn uh, versus line work versus that rendered materials. So quick and easy. The nice thing too is if I do the, the same look and feel over and over and over again, these are just properties. So I could always go to file, save it as a template. And then I would come in here and right off the bat, I would already have my three working scenes with different rendering styles already set up, ready to click through as I begin my new model. So I, I know I've said this before, but I am just getting to be a big fan of scenes, setting up working scenes. I, for the longest time, for me, my brain was set where scenes mean, where's the camera at? Where are you prepping for output? What's going to lay out? And that was pretty much the only way I use scenes. Uh, the more I think about how to use scenes and the things they hold on to, uh, it's just amazing how much you can put into scenes and how much they can control how you look at your model and how quick it is to jump between different views and different locations, not just moving the camera to different spots, which is also great, but uh, yeah, just changing how your model looks with a single click. Pretty nice. If you like that video, click down, like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them. If you subscribe, most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. How do you use scenes? Did I miss something? I've done a couple of videos on using scenes. Let me know if there's another thing that I didn't think of or forgot about. Uh, or if you like this, if you want to talk about more different styles and the ways we can make SketchUp models look. Let us know about any of those ideas or other things you think we should make videos of in the comments. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.